And hello, welcome back. So, uh, we're going to continue talking about turbulence modeling, specifically with respect to this um, uh, filtering or rather you know, large eddy simulations. And we are talking about uh, how we're going to get this uh, uh, Smagorinsky constant or the, the dynamic coefficient instead of having a constant Smagorinsky coefficient by trying to find out the interactions between the large and medium eddies. Alright, so uh, that's where we stop, stopped off at the last video and we want to talk about the procedure of how to find this dynamic coefficient. Now I said before it's a, a kind of more complicated than I explained but the basic concepts are there. So uh, how are we going to uh, do this thing? Well first, the basic idea is to separate these uh, eddies I'm talking ab about here into the large, medium and small eddies. And how are we supposed to do that? We have to do that uh, basically by filtering. And to see the effect of filtering, I'd like you to take a look at a different way of looking at these large, medium and small eddies. So what am I talking about here? And yeah, let's uh, let's go to our diagram. These are the large, medium, and small eddies, right? And um, yeah, it's a little bit hard to see uh, these eddy sizes, large, medium, and small, without looking at some kind of graph. So we'll need to find a way of representing um, what eddies are large, medium, and small, or at least classify them by some sort of size, okay? So the way to do it, okay, if you take a look at our original, you know, graph, uh, graph of, uh, let's say, um, a velocity with respect to time, okay, so you you have, what we have is this, let's say you, you pick a spot, all right, you pick a spot, and then you see some turbulence, all right, something like this, and... Actually, the, this, this fluctuating velocities uh, you see here can be represented as such. You can actually see it as a superposition of multiple waves. So you have the low frequency mode and then you have sometimes the higher frequency modes. Okay, so this is a low frequency. And this is a high frequency. So the effect of the many eddies acting on, let's say, a single point, you have small eddies, you have large eddies. So which ones will usually uh, correspond uh, to a low frequency? All right. So this is one way of looking at it to classify what are big eddies and small eddies on the graph. So let's say you have a large eddy. Will it be usually uh, considered low frequency or high frequency? Usually large eddies because they're big, I mean, and they're big and the velocity of these uh, uh, fluctuating velocities are about the same. Given that the diameter is bigger and the circumference is bigger, we usually attribute these low frequency vibrations to large eddies and likewise because the circumference is smaller for a small eddy all right small eddy we usually attribute high frequency uh, fluctuations in velocity to small eddies so the way the way we the way we want to correlate correlate okay so-called eddy size eddy size is with the use of frequency okay because uh, if you notice what turbulence is they, they are periodic vibrations or fluctuations in velocity the periodic variation in velocity
And whenever you have this term called periodic, you can immediately think of waves and wave. I mean, yeah, you can think of waves. And how how are these waves, you know, how are these frequencies being extracted from these eddies? How are frequencies being extracted? How are frequencies being extracted? So these are usually done with Fourier transforms. Fourier transforms on Navier-Stokes equations. Okay, they're, doing, they're, they're done with Fourier transforms on the Navier-Stokes equations. That's the general long and short of it, the general summary. And I'm not going to tell you how to do this because this is another le depth of level of uh, theoretical analysis when it comes to Navier-Stokes, uh, LES equations. I'm going to skip that part. I'm just, uh, this series is more concerned just with introduction and how it's relevant to CFD. So I'll just only touch on uh, parts that are more useful in the short term. If you want to do uh, yeah, more detailed calculation, uh, it'll, be, it'll be in, uh, it's if you are doing other what, more detailed analysis, it will not be covered in this series. So yeah. So basically, the idea of extracting high-level frequencies are using, or extracting frequencies at all, they're using Fourier transforms of these equations. So you get this low frequency and high frequency. And now, okay, if let's say you did all that hard work and you plotted, you plot them on a graph, okay, you plot them on a graph, and then you plot the distribution, right? So log k this is the kinetic energy or turbulent okay turbulent kinetic en energy so this is turbulent ke and this is the logarithm of the wave number a wave number is some it's proportional to frequency okay it is some constant into the frequency and uh, let's just call it mu so mu is usually what we use of frequency. It is some constant into frequency. Okay, so just to be sure, we can look at wave number, yeah. So this is wave number. All right. It's a, uh, yeah, you can see as such. Okay, wave number is defined as number of radians per unit distance sometimes called angular wave number or this is sometimes the number of wavelength per unit distance so this is what wave number is about okay okay so if you look at some basic definitions that's the idea but uh, high wave number would be high frequency so to speak so okay remember i said that uh, High frequency usually means smaller eddies. So if you were to segment as such arbitrarily, all right, you can call this part small, you can call this part medium, and you can call this part large. Okay, so let me. All right. I shall use this pink color okay all right I shifted the graph down so you have large large eddies here medium eddies here and small eddies here so what what uh, when you are what you're doing when you're filtering is basically Okay, ideally, you want to have a cutoff, right? So this is what a filter does. 
So this is the, and so basically the idea between separating large, medium, and small ideas is with the use of a filter. Now with our first filtering, we basically separate small eddies from the large and the medium. Or basically we just have small, we just have the classification of small and large here. Okay, so that's just small and large, there's no other classification. Um, and we separate them by frequency. Okay, we separate them by frequency. And what the filter does is to have this kind of sort of cut off. The sort of cut off between the large, medium, and the small. Unfortunately, uh, if you were to use a box filter, the cut isn't as clean as as like this straight line down. Okay, so the box filter, if you are familiar with it, so not a clean cut, not a clean cut. So if you were to look at uh, some of the uh, stuff online with regards to a uh, filter um, you see that the box filter in terms of space space coordinates and then if you have a space coordinate versus let's say G at the X minus the Psi where Psi is the distance from the center Okay, so uh, so this is x minus psi equals to zero. X minus c equals to zero, and then you have a neg uh, positive, uh, negative and positive. All right. So for a box filter, if you talk about space coordinates, yeah, sure, you will have uh, g equals to one point zero at this uh, at this uh, within the filter but zero elsewhere. That's what we expect from a box filter. Okay. Remember the G is the special averaging function. If you want to do averaging in a more special manner. Um, however, when it comes to filtering the frequency, let's say you have within the frequency domain. Um, so yeah, you have G. If you want to so-called filter the spectrum like this, using a box filter. So the G will be something like this. G will be something like this when it comes to the wave number. And you have one sharp increase here. Okay. And then, yeah, this is supposed to be symmetrical. Symmetrical. All right. Um, and this is the wave number. So this is usually the wave number k times like the filter length, okay? So, okay, this is supposed to be a constant. So like, let's do c1 times nu equals to some wave number, where nu is the frequency, all right? So this is the wave number and this is how a box filter kind of looks, okay? So if you were to want a sharp spectral filter, that means let's say you want a strict, a strict cut off rather than something here where you have a very very funny cut off like this. If you were to use a box filter, you have some weird funny shape there. Then you'll have a sharp spectral filter. Okay, but if you were to use a sharp spectral filter, then in the space domain where you you have this you have a space coordinate so i'm just going to give you the basic uh what do you call that concept not going to go through into the deep math of it but actually when you try to do a sharp box filter with uh, the spectrum here it will become like this uh, space filter here it will become this wavy wavy thing in the space filter so yeah so uh, that's what we get that's what we get and yeah okay I'll stop for now uh, I'll continue explanation in the next video I'm gonna talk about more about filters okay thanks for watching I'll see you guys again bye bye